video we're going to go through how to make a needle felted landscape picture. A similar picture to this one is on the front of our basic needle felting starter kit with the bright colours. All of the colours in the kit will make this scene. So we've got black, deep purple, lagoon, raspberry, orange, chick yellow, white, lime and grass. I think that's all we've got in there. So let's get started. I have the felting foam from in the kit, one piece of pre-felt, got spare needles if I need them. These are all 36 triangle and a holder with a needle in. So I will just set that up ready for stabbing. Pass it in my foam. Again, like I said with the alpaca kit, read the tips in the lid of the box and you'll learn things like always park your needle in your phone when you're not using it and such like. So we will start with the sky and we work from top to bottom almost of the picture. Amazingly, the sky is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours. So we'll begin with black. And we're just going to lay a small amount of it over the top and give it a stab. And then remember to lift your work and go again. Now it's tacked down, it's not fully felted at all yet. I'm going to put a significant amount of purple on. It's going to mainly cover up the black, but where there is no black, you can see it's a lighter colour here. And I may add a bit more black later. And then tack that down. Don't worry about the fluffy ends going over the edge. In this one, you can see the pre-felt goes to there. It's fine if you're going to put it in a mount for a photo frame. Those fluffy ends are going to be hidden away. Sometimes if you want to extend your picture slightly further than pre-felt, you can do that as well. Again, lift off. Next we've got the lagoon. Keep this quite wispy. Now I'm going to do a thicker bit of orange at the bottom. So this is the sunset. Now to break up this sharp line of colour change, really, really, really pinchy bits of pink. It's amazing how those tiny wispy bits just break up the stark lines. a 
bit more of the black. bits of chick yellow down the bottom. We will be doing more of a sun here but we'll add that once we've got the hills in so that we know the exact placement of it. At the moment we're just trying to build up the background. It doesn't matter if the hills go over here of purple this time though. Just break up some of those bulb bits again. So it's kind of starting to hold now. I'd have a bit of trouble taking all the fibres off now. But to really get it all in, obviously being right-handed my needle's constantly going in at this angle so I flip it over and get those fibres crisscrossing more. It also means that your fibres on top won't be pulled all in the same direction. Sometimes you can find that it starts all slanting to one side because if you're, you're stabbing in that direction. So I'm happy that's all holding now, but just got a few little bare patches in my dark bit of my sky so I'm just going to take a bit of the purple and a bit of the black not much and just mix these colors together just make sure they go over these bare corners of pre-fill A lot of people ask what is pre-felt. Some people have never come across it before and it's essentially slightly felted felt. So the sheets of craft felt you can get generally they aren't wool and they can be quite difficult to work into because all the fibres are already all tangled in there. With the pre-felt however it's not completely felted so you might not be able to see on camera. But you can pull those fibres apart. So your needle works in nicely. And you will feel if you're stabbing in the pre felt, there's less resistance than where you've added all those fibres in, where you've tangled all those fibres up. And by stabbing and felting your picture on it, you are turning the pre-felt into felt. There we go, much happier with that. For the hills then, that is going to be mainly done in the grass green. And I like to just take a big chunk of it. Restack that a bit, make my fibres slightly shorter. And I'll do the hill that's the furthest away first. So I'll just show you. This hill's the one further away. We will add some shading over both of them. So just let your fibres sit where you want them to go. And I quite like the fact that. The fibres having the direction almost shows the direction that the grass is going in and the, and the landscape is going in. 
and then stab. the other hill on I think that's where that hill's going today And by not worrying about the placement of the hills when you did the sky, you've made sure that you did just concentrate on the sky and it looks more natural. So those hills are holding on now. And again, I'll sort out these little corners afterwards. So we'll do this sun here now, which take a bit of your chick yellow. I like to snap the fibres up, so you want quite small bits. Try to avoid cutting because you'd get really harsh edges then and they won't felt together. Give it a bit of a roll. Make sure you stab in the sky and not onto the hills. You can flip it over so that you can really work it all in all directions for this. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle. holding in nicely now. And for the centre I'm just going to take a tiny amount of the natural white. Again I'm just breaking up those fibres. That's probably a bit too much. Take half of that and just place it right down near the bottom. It's the last tiny bit of light that's peeking out from behind the hill before the sunset. Now we'll do the far away hill. I'll just show you. You can see it's slightly darker than the one that's closer to you. It just gives the illusion of depth and it being further away. Take a small amount of your brass green even smaller amount of your black. And just blend the two together. I think I'll get a bit more of the grass in there. It's brilliant having all these different colours that you can blend. When I was deciding which colours would go in the starter kit, I wanted to make sure that you could do almost anything with them because you can blend darker greens, lighter greens, darker blues. I mean you can see it's it's almost as if we've got every shade of colour in there. So I'm not going to take all of it, just take a small amount. Lay it over. Try to follow this line of this hill, the closer hill, and then you can fold those bits back. It just really defines that difference between the two hills. tiny bit more black. Just 
make this bit really dark. We'll do a similar thing with the grass green. Taking a small amount of that and a small amount of the lime. And blend those together again. So this is going to be for the hill that's closer to us. I'll work on this really definite edge first. Making sure that I'm controlling the fibres that I really want in a definite position. And then I can start working further down the hill. So I'm just going to add a bit more of the lime and grass mix there and just want to cover up this little bare corner again and make sure you stab all these hills on really firmly now i'm happy all that is on nice and firm now last two bits of detail is just defining these hills slightly with a bit of the dark green blend that we made and then the three little sheep. So here's some of the dark, dark green blend. I'm just going to take a small amount Stab along that edge. I'm actually going to stab from this angle because I want to make sure that I'm pushing into the hill and not into the sky. You can leave it without this bit if you'd like, but I like just a slight tiny bit of definition there. personal preference really. Tiny bit more down here. And then I'll do one on the other hill. This one it won't show up quite so much because your hill's already dark, but I like to just make sure that it's nice and defined. There we go. Now for our three little sheep. Small amount of natural white. I'm going to break up those fibres because we only want tiny, tiny bits. Obviously, if you want to do a bigger sheet, you need more. I'm just going to roll into my hand, almost making pre-felt again. And we'll stab this sheep in, which sounds so bad, actually. When you're stabbing in with these tiny amounts. Don't stab in the centre. Try to work around the edge. So otherwise what you may end up doing is just losing your sheep and it goes completely through. There's one sheep. too big. 
that sheep will make two sheep. I like to do these sheep with white bodies and black faces, like the Shropshire sheep. So I'll stick one sheep in there. taking care making sure that I don't lose my sheep to the other side of the pre-felt. Okay. Same as we did with the bodies, do the heads with even smaller amounts of black. And just like these two are walking away. It is tiny amounts you really need for these things. This one can be grazing down here. There we go. Very similar to the last one. So that's how you do the picture that is on the front of the Needle Felting Starter Kit Brights box. Obviously, if you've got all these colours at home, you can do it without the kit. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Happy stabbing!